Hey guys, let's have a conversation today about high-end magic cards going for insane prices. It's coming up next. Hey guys, welcome back. MTG Moxman here. If you're new to the channel and you somehow found me out there in YouTube land, well, thanks a lot for checking out my content today. I hope you enjoyed it. So today's conversation is going to focus around some of the higher-end Magic cards that are selling right now and the kind of insane prices they're going for compared to what our price memory remembers back in the day. So first off, let me tell you, I consider myself an average Magic player. I am not rich. I'm not like swimming in money, um, I, I work for a living, but I gotta be honest, a lot of my cards have really gone up in value over the years because I'm one of those guys who never sold their collections. I've sold pieces of it, I've sold parts of it at times, but I've held on to a lot of my cards as well over the years, and I bought them back at times when it seemed like they were affordable. So I look at this, and I'm just gonna pull out a little bit here, look at my collection. Now look at this, and, and you realize how far your collection has come. You look at it and you go, wow, man, here's uh, my beat up Black Lotus. Things trashed, right? But it was like 250 bucks, I think. Maybe, maybe less. How about, how about Time Twister? Right, good old Time Twister. You gotta have a Time Twister. I think that was $15. How about Ancestral Recall? My collection goes on and on. But I wasn't paying that kind of money. And I can't imagine myself paying that money now. And I'm sure you out there feel the same way. Some people can afford to buy those cards. The whales out there. The guys who've been at this a long time. Or the people who have really high-end paying jobs that can afford to get into that level of magic. But for the average player out there, getting into a level that contains $100,000 decks just kind of blows the mind a little bit. That's how I feel when I look at it. Because I never thought in my wildest dreams... The cards be worth what they're worth now. You know, I, I look back and I remember dual lands being two, three dollars. I, I I remember those days. So as a player who's been around this a very long time, since the beginning, it 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 really rattles me sometimes to realize how much my collection is worth and I still play with it. Because again, I consider myself a player. I like to play the game. I like to have fun with my decks. I like to do stuff. Some people just collect and like to have the cards. And we have seen some really crazy movements in a lot of the higher end magic stuff. And a few weeks ago, we discussed that, you know, some of these cards are going to go up because everything else on the reserve list is climbing, which eventually reaches the top. It's like a garden hose. The water's starting at the bottom, but it's pushing its way up to the top of the hose to spray out the water. Well, that's what's happening. The higher end cards, the black lotuses and stuff, they are now reaching new levels and they've been jacked up. Okay, they are going up. But the, the real difference here is, is a few weeks ago, I told you all out there, I couldn't find enough data to confirm some of the sales. It is catching up now. Sales are happening at a brisk enough pace. I can see the sales. It's not like one or two sold. They are selling now. I have some confirmed sales locally through one of my uh, one of my contacts. Let me know that yeah, some Black Lotus have moved privately, but they did move. They've changed hands. Uh, as there's some sales on TCG Player as well as on eBay to kind of give you that feel of what's going on. So we'll go over that. Let's take a look and see what you guys think. I want to know something at the end of this. So if you stick around for this whole video, I will ask a question later on. I'm just curious what you guys think. So number one is Tabernacle of Pendovale. Now I remember actually opening this card back when we could like open Legends packs, and I look at this and see somebody's got a you know a BGS 10 there. For $101,000. I know Black Lotuses have sold for that level in the past. I know they have. This is not a Black Lotus. It's one of those cards considered part of the power of 10. Like, I wouldn't even consider power of 10, but people do tell me that. I look at it and say, it's $100,000. I don't know if it's going to sell, but the fact somebody put it up there, and people can put up in the same prices just to see if things sell. They can do that. But then we go and we look at the sales. Now the sales, when you see 3,000, 3,000, okay, right? But one did sell for $6,900, which is, you know, basically $7,000 with tracking, shipping, insurance. It's still a far cry from that 100,000, but it's not BGS 10 either, is it? And there are collectors out there who can afford that money and will spend it. 
to get them. It's few and far between. It's a very niche market, but it will happen. I just don't know if that card will sell, and I'm keeping an eye. Now, the bottom one there for 3800 on the listings, that is an Italian version, and it's crimped. It has, like, crushed corners. I wouldn't risk my money on cards like that. I would avoid them. When I see the other ones, though, at 3500 40 those I can see selling and being worth the money, guys. It's insane, but it's happening. So, yes, this card's going up. And, yes, when we saw other cards like Unfulfilled Desires climb up, when we saw cards like those moving up, you should have realized this was going up because I told you. That's right. Mox Man is playing. I told you so. It's a fun game, especially when I actually get to do it. Now, Black Lotus. You can see over there that the Black Lotus has got sales uh, of 17,000, 30,000, kind of best offer accepted. Now, those are rated cards because the people buying them are new collectors or higher end collectors trading in some Bitcoin for some hard assets. Now, when I see that there's a Black Lotus for $762,000, I'm not surprised because I've seen that one for 500 and something thousand. It hasn't sold yet, but the price keeps moving higher until somebody's going to bite. The ones below it for $16,000, $17,000, I found a couple at the $15,000, but they were too spaced out, and one of them was not a reputable seller that I could not list because I'm easy to get the time of day. When I look at these, though, there are Black Lotuses changing hands. It is happening. And the guys who have some beat-up copies are jacking up their price a bit to, to kind of catch some of the windfall of this price rising. We knew it was going to happen. When I see it happen, it blows my mind knowing I have a couple. I have some, oh, by the way, a collector edition one sold for $9,000. It was gem mint, but it sold for $9,000 for collector edition. You should have seen my face. I know, I'm not, when I saw that listing. When I look at these though, I'm not as surprised these are moving up because there's so few left, especially ones of any good condition. But the idea that these could end up in a museum one day because they're worth so much money, they're like a Picasso or something, blows my mind that I'm seeing conversations headed in that direction where it's like, what do you think will happen in 50 years? There are ultra rare baseball cards. Think of a uh, detective comic 27 Superman. Number one, who knows what will happen? Time will tell, but the idea that this could happen to us in our, in our time in the next 20 years when match is going to be 50 something years old. Wow. I'm telling you. Makes you want to save up and get a Black Lotus, doesn't it? Now, the last one I want to show you is going to be Time Twister. Okay? Now, this is a card that is used in Commander, but there's only so many copies to go around. People use even Collector Edition ones, and those are through the roof. When you look there and you see that there are copies selling for $21,000, graded, but still $21,000 for a beta. You see un unlimited copies, and they're going for like six, dollars $7,000, guys. It's only moving upward and the pressure's there. Now look at the listings that are for sale. Now they're all slabbed and graded and they're starting like 18 grand. Slabbed and graded. There weren't any that were ungraded. Okay? That means people are holding on to them. When people hold this kind of card, it just is putting pressure like that underneath and it's just pushing the price higher until somebody caves in and pops a copy up. I'll be keeping an eye on Time Twister to see because it is a commander played card. But the idea you're seeing these values at this level should not be that surprising is what my point is to you guys. It should not be surprising with everything else going on, the inflation that's happening, the money that's being spent into this card game. We are going to see things go a lot higher in the next 12 months. And I will be there to tell you guys what's happening. I think it's a fascinating subject. But what do you guys think will happen? Do you think this is going to end up as museum quality pieces out there? Do you think we're going to see this stuff one day in a museum like the Smithsonian and it'd be just looked at? Or are we not going to be able to touch them anymore? Are you going to be afraid to play your cards? Because I play my cards still. My cards are mostly beat up and played, guys, because I played since I was a teenager. I don't care. I want to play the game. I would love to see what you guys think, though about that kind of idea where cards would go to that value, they'd be that hard to get that just blows your mind. So please share that with me. All right, guys, this is MTG Mox, man. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Love to have new people joining us. And thanks again. We'll see you tomorrow. This is where I click the buttons off and things happen. You go beep, boop, boop, and things go away and the screen ends and we're awesome. Shop smart, chef, that's smart. Hey guys, big shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. Lewis, Kevin, you guys rock, man. Come on, Ben, you're amazing. Ross, you know it's true. Pause, I see you out there, bro. Awesome, guys.